New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Visit ryanfamily.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Ryan's Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins. In our second Sweet 16 show, Rolling Thunder Sean Taylor takes on the prodigal son, Jason Gauthier Jr. Game two, Jason Gauthier Sr. takes on Dan Shoe Gauthier. No relation. Now let's roll with your host, Jay Horrigan. Welcome to New England Candle Pins in our 2016 Summer Series. This is our second episode, our third game, and our bowlers today are Sean Taylor and Jason Gauthier Jr. Sean, I'm going to talk to Jason first, okay? Just wanted to let you know so you weren't standing there wondering. Jason, welcome to our show. Thank you. And you're here from Agawam, Mass. Yes. All our viewers are wondering how old are you? I'm 18. Well, that's awesome. And... Uh, You've been on, you were telling me before, you've been on TV before. Yeah, I have. Excellent. What shows have you been on? Uh, New Palace and Candleman for Kids. And just to let our viewers know, how many Gothiers do we have on this, uh, on today's show? Uh, three. Three Gothiers, one Taylor. Uh, how many Gothiers are you related to on today's show? One of them. Just one of them, and then we have a Gothier to be named later. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Have you ever bowled against Sean? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Were there any issues during warm-up? None. None that you know of? None that I know of. Okay. Well, I can assure there were some because we know Sean. Sean's been on the show before, and we're glad to have you back, Sean. I'm glad to be back. Excellent. And have you been bowling as of recently? Actually, very well. Good. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, you, you feel your game's in good shape? Yeah, the last about month I've been throwing the ball really good, first ball in the pocket, so... We'll, we'll see. Okay. Uh, now, how often uh, do you bowl here? Is Ryan's your normal place that you bowl? It is, yeah. I just bowl once a week for right now. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, we're going to have this match between Jason and Sean. Uh, we're looking forward to it. It's our first match of, the, of this episode and our Sweet 16. So, we're looking forward to that. Matt, you know what you need to do. It's roll the bracket time. Welcome back to New England Candle Pins in our 2016 Summer Series. We're ready for our Game 3 of our Episode 2. Uh, Jason Gauthier Jr. versus Sean Taylor. Up first is going to be Jason Jr. Here we go, Jason, on lane one. And we'll get to Richie's old comment about me shortly. <laughs> What is up with that? Nice ball. It was a decent ball. He gets a good mix out of that. Leaves the 1-3, drops 8. So Jeremy, you heard Richie call me old, correct? Well, I, he didn't directly say you were old. I, I wouldn't qualify it as old. What I said was that because Jason is younger than your kids that you might be, you know, a little old. There we go. We have it again on tape. Know. Live stream to us. Oh, I, I actually I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> you did. Oh, yeah. whoops. Whoops. Jason yeah. here picks up five on his first ball in the second frame. Three more there. And earlier, Richie... Jeremy, you weren't here. Richie took a picture of the two of us for I saw that Snapgram picture. or Insta Chat or Insta something. Book. Yes. The book face. And he sent it out over the line and I, I it showed it. my receding hairline and bald spot quite prominently. So not only 
not only am I old, I'm bald. Yeah, you, got a, you got a whole Manu Ginobili thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel fear on the uh, on the receding hairline. Bill. Well, I'll race you guys to bald. You want to make a bet out of this? I'll race you to bald. Uh, you got a big lead now. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Taylor off to the left. He qualified with a 386. He's our number four overall seed. He's got an average of 114, high single 163, high triple is 434. He bowls right here out of Ryan's. Starts with a nine. And Sean has been on our show before. Just off the head pin again. Hey, Jeremy, Sean is a regular bowler here, right? He is. He bowls in the uh, Friday Night League. Right. And for those of you that uh, may not know Jeremy, Jeremy is one of the managers here, correct, Jeremy? That is correct, if you want to call me that. And tell us a little bit about Ryan's family amusement. Well, we have about 10 or 11 locations, bowling centers and game rooms, uh, mostly down the Cape area, the islands. Yeah. Um, we do also have a place in Malden, but that's... Kind of like a sister. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Ryan's brother owns that one. But well, hopefully, hopefully expanding soon. Oh, we appreciate you having us, Jeremy. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely love it. And here at the uh, facility in Millis, you offer uh, leagues for adults and juniors, correct? Juniors, seniors, adults, mixed. Everything. Everything. Yeah. We actually have about 26 leagues here. That's great. Top seven for Gothier Jr. there. You do offer also, as we just saw up on the screen, wine, Chardonnay, <laughs> Pinot Grigio we saw. I believe I saw Zinfandel up there. All the best wines. Beer, Coors Light, Bud Light, Pabst Blue Ribbon, Sam Adams. Can't forget the Lagunitas IPA. Ah, okay. And of course, what everybody is bowling for today, the nachos. Can't forget the nachos. So Gothier Jr. sneaks by the seventh pin. Has a nine there, he's at 33 through four. So both of our bowlers still open through completed boxes. Sean Taylor stepping up here in the third. is halfway to Worcester. Hey, what a great shot for a oh, spare. Man. Halfway to Worcester and all the way home. That's a big pickup for Sean Taylor early in the match. Seven the last to go on that one. Pretty well. He's got the 2 4 and 7, or excuse me, the 2 4 10. Piece of wood behind there might help. Sneaks by to the left side. It's a nice 9, and it'll be a 44, giving him an 11 pin lead through four boxes. Tell us a little bit about Gothier Jr., Jimmy. Uh, Gothier comes in here with a 114 average, high single of a 170, high triple of 421. Qualified with a 362. Just 18 years old, he made his first world's appearance in uh, November last. And I bet it was an absolute culture shock. Well, I think he handled himself pretty well. Six box. He's gonna have to get it going here. I know any, anyone who's bowled up in the world knows that that's a different breed than than your regular leagues or roll-offs, anything. Yeah, 
Yeah, the first time is definitely difficult, no question about it. That's a great ball there. Not the quickest eight drop in the world, but it is makeable. Yeah. Got the seven nine. Oh. Would have clipped the nine and jumped over that wood in front of the seven. Looking to push them both back in. It was the right idea. And a nine box. Oh, now Sean Taylor can really put a stranglehold on this match. A bit of a skip lob, but. Leaves the three, six, seven, and ten. And he makes it. He did carry nice the ten spare. pin. That was tough to carry the ten the way the wood was situated. Touching the three pin, it's hard to carry all three of those. I'll give him a fifteen pin lead plus a ball through the completed frames. Oh boy, did he make that ball count. It's one thing about his ball, he has such an explosive ball. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's the right side of the four pin and it falls to the right side. So Jason Gothier, Jr. here in a little bit of a hole. Nice ball. Oh, that's He's going to get all that's ten. Yes, he does. To come back. He was down 25 in a ball, but... Still, still needs another one to catch up. Strikes go a long way. Let's see if he can throw another one here. Leaves the Kaliri. He hit it oh, well. He did. to make something happen there, trying to knock that 10 pin off the wall to come across to the 8 pin. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. I don't know if anybody oh. caught that. That was Jay Horrigan calling out the pin numbers nice. yep. accurately. Oh, well, and the shot too. I mean, Thank you had you. the whole everything. I knew it. Where is Chester Cove to witness this? I think, I don't know. I think he's, I think huh. he's sneezing something. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Or it could be over a steaming pot. Three in a row for Taylor. Could be anything. We wish DC well. We'll see him back at the next yeah. taping for sure. So that's 89 for Sean Taylor, who all of a sudden has caught heat. Buries the one two and leaves the six pin. Four straight spares. That's going to give Taylor a 34 pin plus a ball lead, so. Junior. Let's see if he can put a few good balls together here. Well, sometimes it just isn't your game. No? No. 
first time on TV, you never know how you're gonna, gonna react to it. Especially in this format. One string's tough. Yeah. That's what you guys have always said. It's this one string is just a brutal format. Because if you have a couple of tough boxes and you get up against a guy, you know, Sean, with four spares in a row, it is tough to come back. He's got a good chance for five here, too. Yeah. Unable to get the uh, nine pin to go. Yeah, that was a little unfortunate that nine stood. Wood flew in front of it. <clears throat> it's all arbitrary at this point. Talk about one string. I've seen I've seen Dead Klein throw a 78 game. It can happen. We'll finish up over 130. Sean Taylor will finish with a 133 and defeat Jason Gothier Jr. on this first match of this Sweet 16 matchup. So we'll be back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment. We're back with our bowlers from our first game of today's show. Uh, first of all, Jason, uh, you ran up against a buzzsaw. Uh, Sean was on fire. He had uh, the four frames where he had spares, and then you just seemed to be just a, a little bit off there. Yeah, I just couldn't get any breaks. I was off the head pin. There was nothing I could do. Yeah, uh, how'd you feel? Were you a little uh, nervous with the TV and everything, or just off? I was just off. Okay, okay. And Sean, Sean bowled really, really well. Yeah. So, well, hey, it was fun having you here. I hope to have you here again soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Excellent, excellent. Well, Sean, uh, great job. Uh, you bowled very well. Uh, the the four marks in a row had to feel really good. Yeah, it was nice. I was just getting my first ball in there and getting spare leaves and just converting on them. Yeah, and you'd get high pin counts on your first ball, which made the spares that much easier, it, it seemed like. That's the big thing, is getting the big fill on the mark. Yeah, excellent. Well, you advanced. Uh, you'll take on the winner of our next match, match uh, which is going to pit Gothier against Gothier, so it's going to be an exciting match. There will be a Gothier in uh, the Elite Eight, so we do know that. So congratulations, cheers to your score sheet. So we'll be back to talk to uh, Gothier and Gothier in just a moment. What is community without community support? Without community access? Without communication that creates a common bond? You can make community by making Community TV. Contact your public access Community TV Center. Learn how you can help, because you can. Volunteer today. When you support your Community TV, you also support your community. Candle pins. We're here with our bowlers for our second match in today's episode. First of all, we're going to talk to Jason Gothier Sr. Jason, um, going up against Dan Dan Gothier. Uh, have you bowled against him before? Oh yeah, I bowled against him a lot of times. Okay, and have you had success against him? Yeah, fairly good success. I know that uh, usually a Gothier wins. <laughs> well, that's that's interesting. That I, I wouldn't have realized that. Um, and is that because um, of superior bowling or just the way it happens to work out? No, it's usually I've known him a lot of times, and uh, he's just too nice. 
He is a very nice individual. He does. He treats people well. He treats them with the respect. He tends to go by the golden rule, I find. Yes, he definitely does. Absolutely. So, Dan, the man, Gothier, also known as Shu, how have you been? I'm pretty good. Thanks. It's good to see you. We haven't seen you in a little while. It's good to have you on the show. Yeah, I was on the last show. It's just uh, the last, uh, what was it, the winter version? It was the winter yeah. version. It just didn't last very long. <laughs> But it was a quick, good visit. It's always good to see you. We'd like you to stick around longer this time. Yeah, it's always fun. And the benefit of going out early is I usually get to stick around with you guys and help you commentate. That's right. And pick on me. Not that you need any help, though. <laughs> That's not what some people say. Some people say I need more help than there is in the world. That's what they have medication for. Okay. Well, thanks, Don, for bringing that up. And now I will go medicate, and we will carry on with the show. We'll be back with our second match in just a moment. And welcome back to New England Candle Pins. This is our fourth game in our second episode, which is actually our second game, but game four overall in our summer series of 2016. First up is Jason Gauthier Sr. I don't think anybody understood that except me and Pete. I have no clue. Pete understood it and I understood it. No one else did. What I can tell you is that Jason has left the 1, 3, and 8 off the head pin to the left. Jason is our first southpaw of the summer series. And Gauthier Sr. comes in here averaging 110, the high single of 187, high triple of 464. Jason a long time. I can tell you his 110 average is only a result of where he bowls. The Holyoke Turn Hall is uh, one of the one of the tougher places you'll you'll roll a little candle pin. Picks up the four horseman for a spare. Buries the four horseman inside textbook. So it's probably somewhat similar to I don't know if you've ever been to Sawyer's Bowldrome in Northboro, Massachusetts. I can't say I have. It's uh, very difficult. The Pin setters are the first six Bullmore pin setters ever manufactured. Really? Well, that's older than Jay. Yeah. Thank you. I think. Hey, I'm on your side. You know, we're going to get through this. We will. We will. We will prevail. And Dan Goth here with the half worcester to the left. That's a nice bit on it. Leaves the 5 7. averaging 115, the high single of 192, triple of four, 464 as well. Uh, the ball looked a little tight, but he's fortunate to have the four horsemen. Same shot that Jason just picked up. Although this one is on the left side. The one, two, four, and seven. He looks to go inside. He carries it as well. It's a terrific shot. So far, the four horseman is not safe. So, mirror image of the first two boxes for the Gothiers. It's fitting enough. and off to the left, but on the good side of the two pin, he ends up leaving the one, three, and six. Mm -hmm. 
takes the head pin for the 10 box. So Jason at 36 through three. Tough break off the head pin. See if he can throw two into two here. Puts a nice bit on it. Always happy with a 10 box out of a, a first pin break like that. It's a good 10. So it'll be 46 for Jason. Now, Chu working on a mark. the ball and leaves the four and eight. Tough piece of wood on yeah, the Yeah, I really don't like that very much. Gotta try and pick it clean. He's going by it. Ooh. Is it gonna go Ooh. back? Oh, is it gonna come around? It, it really is. is. That's not falling. Wow. Oh, oh! <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> There are a lot of ways to get a spare in this game. There's one of them. <laughs> that wood started at 3 o'clock, so, came around the entire clock. As long as you have time to wait. And it's not a break until you do something with it, and he puts That's a good right. 7 on that. So I'll put him through 44 through 3. Triangle right side, 3, 5, and 6. Way. Is he going to steal this one, too? Wait a second. Five pin stands, I think. And, oh. and the cap off the wall. That's about as interesting a two boxes <laughs> I think you'll see. <laughs> Eight pins to Dan Goff here. Jason with a good ball. Fortunate to carry that nine pin. That makes the shot a, a lot easier. Three pin and ten pin here. Nice pick. Great shot. Three right into the ten and a very big mark right there. Halfway through the match. Strike for Jason Gothier. Shoe on the one three leaves the triangle this time on the left side with the two four five. and leaves what I believe is the two pin it's still on the deck. Nine box. So through completed frames, through five, Dan Gauthier is chasing Jason Gauthier Sr. by three pins. Senior, however, is opposite, or excuse me, Gauthier is opposite Senior's hammer here. I did not see Senior come in with a hammer, nor any kind of tool, tool belt, or any accoutrement. Oh dear. Oh boy. Come on, Jay. We've been doing this far too long. Huh. It's the four horsemen plus the nine pin. I mean, what do you want me to call it? A, a wrench? Jason with the wrench? I, I would like it called the Phillips head screwdriver. Or 
what if I what if I want a, a Turx? There we go. I want a flathead. <laughs> no, we're sticking with hammer. We're sticking okay. with hammer here. Okay. Jason on the strike, is that better? Is that better for you? Oh yes, he did get yes, a he strike. Did. Oh, you remember that one? Yeah. Well yeah. It makes it good for another one. A little thin on the one three, he's gonna leave the two, seven, and ten. Looking for what really is important count right here. Just seven on it. Yeah. Good 10. Second two right into the 10. It's off the head pin a little bit for a four. One, three, five, six, eight, nine. Outside. I'll just get the one, three, five. Tough ten to boot. Just gets one of them. I'll put him at 101. We're still open here for Dan. It is. He needs a couple marks in these two boxes. Shoe with a good ball leaves the five and the nine. An interesting call here. The wood to the right is a little high, and there is a piece behind it. It'd be interesting to see if he tries to play the wood on the right, Jeremy, or if he tries to go buy it. Uh, I, I think I'd play the wood on the right. That's what he does. He carries nicely. Mark in the seventh for Gothier. Yeah. Left plus the 10 pin. Yeah, this is a tough one to carry both corners. Yeah. I concur. Out of check in, Jay. Glad I could help out. Kind of jumps out three there. Opposite the eight box here. These are a couple important pins. And he's sure of the one. Right. So heading into the last two boxes, we got a four pin match. Another tight one. That's a great ball by Goff, yeah. your senior. Got the five pin, but wow, this is a, this is a sketchy piece of wood. And from our angle, it's tough to tell whether or not he can get by it on the left. He's gonna try by it. He goes yes, by it. What a shot! Just a four pin match. That's a really big mark. Let's see what he does with it. The head pin well, but a little full. Still a big seven count. He's got the four, six, and ten. Wood comes up to the lip and touches it. I think he's going to go way right on this one. I agree. That wood on the left isn't going to cover. In. That uh, that puts him at 127, and with uh, Dan Goff here at 97, that forces 30 pins. So essentially, two marks. Off to the right, and he's glad for that. That's the one, two, seven, and eight. Very fortunate to be looking at this bear lead. Oh, 
Oh, he's got it. Great shot, great great shot from Gauthier. That's a great shot. He Still needs, needs decent phone another mark. He needs another mark no matter what. Regardless of what this first ball is. Well, it's and it's one. It sounds silly, but it's actually a really big one. Because if he makes this, we still have a match. Oh, he's off to the right, and Jason Gothier Sr. is gonna walk away with this one. I shouldn't say walk away, scamper away, I think would be the way to put this match. Scamper. Dan held on to that ball just a hair too long. Jason will go on to face Sean Taylor in our Elite Eight. So that match, the final score will be 127-118, and Jason was correct when he stated earlier, a Gothier will win. It happened to be him. I well wouldn't bet against it. No. You're, that's why you win. Well, I mean, if gambling were legal, of course. Uh, correct, correct. So we'll be back to talk to our Gothiers in just a moment. We're back here with our bowlers from our second match of today's show. Uh, first of all, we'll talk to Dan. Dan, good effort there. Yeah, thanks. It was a good effort all the way up to the one ball, right? <laughs> well, the one ball, I thought that was more strategic. No, it definitely wasn't strategic. In fact, I made the same mistake you see a lot of new bowlers make. I tried to throw it too hard and, you know, pulled it. And I've been bowling long enough not to do that. So it was a little disappointing. But uh, Jason bowled great. So, I, you know, he put the pressure on. I needed two marks, and I knew it. And it's always harder to come back and throw the two marks when you know you need to do it. So congratulations. He bowled really well. Well, he was correct. A Gothier did win this. That's true. That's true. That was pretty much a lock, right? It's just like the Warriors winning the first round of the playoffs. I wasn't sure a Gothier would win, <laughs> but he was correct. Well, great effort, Dan. Always great to have you here, Jason. Uh, 127. Um, you, you had that strike in the six with was huge, and then the spare in the ninth. Yeah, it was close. You know, we were matching box for box in the first four, but luckily. I just got to get two marks, put up something, and the spare strike definitely helped uh, push me ahead. And then, yeah, the ninth was uh, a big ball. That wood wasn't good, and I don't know how I got by it, but that was enough to win. Well, yeah, and you, you bolt very strong. You stayed right on top of it, and you, and you took it right to the end. It kept the pressure on Dan the entire match. Yeah, bowling first uh, sometimes helps. If you can throw that mark, then you got to put the pressure on them, and it uh, held through to the whole 10 boxes. Well, the victory, it moves you on to uh, the Elite Eight, uh, and you will take on Sean Taylor, uh, who beat your son, unfortunately. So there's got to be a little bit of ill will there. Oh, yeah, and I bowled them last time in the winter one, so yeah. it's, well, double revenge. Well, that, that, that holds out a lot of promise for a lot of ugliness in that match. So we'll be looking forward to there. There may be some chair smashing, maybe some brass knuckles, hidden razor blade. Lord only knows. We can only hope for some violence in that one. So that'll wrap up this show. We want to thank all the bowlers here. We thank Ryan's Family Amusement, uh, Richie Myrick, Jeremy Seaholm, Pete Fasciano. Well, no, we, we won't mention Matt. Chris Flynn, Sophie, everybody else. Matt was busy eating the munchkins during the show, so he didn't do a heck of a lot. So I'm Jay Hargan. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on New England Candlepins. Candlepins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candlepin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Visit ryanfamily.com. By your community's public access channel. 
and by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.